Dr. Cam here for Chapter 7, The Freight Broker Millionaire Mindset. Chapter 7 is about spotting talent. Knowing your talent is as important as knowing your numbers. The people you surround yourself with in your organization make or break your success. No one succeeds alone. No one. The individuals you hire, promote, or entrust with the critical information, the professionals you expect to execute your company mission, are the greatest and your greatest competitive advantage or the biggest downfall. They're the champions for your company or a substantial drain on time, money, resources, and potential. So many times business owners recruit and develop leaders without realizing that their hiring and developing choices are random, impulsive, disjointed, or disconnected to their objectives and strategies. Their choices are not adding value. Their people are more or less hastily drafted into organization through a borrowed hiring process never truly on board and then neglected regarding performance management and development. It's no wonder so many employees and leaders feel disengaged, uninspired, and checked out. Stop for a moment and consider the people in your organization. Do you remember why you hired that vice president of sales and operations? What made you think that controller was the best person for the job? Was it a convenience? Is the application hit your desk when you had a hole to fill? How did your senior team get to where they are today? Were they promoted, hired from the outside? Why this and not that person? What skills does each bring to the organization that makes him or her a valuable player? What characteristics makes each cultural fit for your company? If you feel stumped, you're not alone. We surround ourselves with people. But why do we feel in so many instances like we're stuck with what we have, that we are carrying dead weight, or that we do not have the right fit for an important leadership position? As an owner, you might be thinking, how did I let this happen? Can I turn this around? Well, yes, what you need is a working knowledge of the talent and inventory for your enterprise. Working knowledge of your talent allows you to align it with a greater strategy. Businesses need good people, and as an owner, you must have a working knowledge of your talent bench. This book is your field guide to strategic talent management, a platform with nine centers of excellence that will help you analyze, understand, implement organizational improvements surrounding your people. Strategic talent management puts you in the ready position to enhance value, optimize talent, prepare for growth, posture for sale, or transition to the next generation. Strategic talent management gives you the know-how, intelligence, and control to leverage your people. You can recruit top talent, train and develop the best players, and ready your talent for new challenges. It gives you the agility to deploy top talent. By working this system, you can lead your company toward peak performance. The right mindset and the people on your team and the right equipment, talent management, to steer them toward a win. The only variables should be external conditions. Strategic talent management prepares you for those X factors because you'll have the team in place to compete in any environment. When an organization prioritizes strategic talent management, builds bench strength, and goes to market with a high-performing team, it will always increase your profitability attract your top talent, create an environment for people to do their best work, bring value to the community, broaden transition options, keep the wealth engine in the family and owned by employees, realize that leadership philosophy is powerful and executed successfully. How strategic talent management works. With strategic talent management, you start where you are and address your greatest people pain. Many owners begin this journey by identifying a single problem, such as recruiting. Then a trend is spotted. Perhaps the business repeatedly recruits and hires people who fail the organization after six months. Working through the nine centers of excellence, you'll prioritize what competencies require the greatest attention immediately. Then you'll work through the strategic talent management continuum. The framework is fundamental. While the processes are designed to suit your company's human capital needs and you'll draw from the framework provided in this book to support a new way of thinking about strategic talent management in your company. There might be pieces or parts of talent management continuum already in place at your organization that you can rely on, but there'll always be holes. Those gaps are where errors in hiring and the way we deal with people occur together. Here's how the strategic talent management framework is organized. Strategy and culture. These bookend strategic talent management so that your people are intrinsically connected to your drivers for success. Corridors. These are three key components for creating a talent infrastructure for your company. 
You can think of the corridors as levels of the process and they align with the life cycle of your talent. These strategic talent management corridors are talent acquisition, talent development, and talent deployment. As a strategic talent management case study, Mark Zuckerberg's success is undeniable. His decisions have come a long way, but one may ask how he managed to achieve all of this. What are the secrets behind his indomitable rise? The following list shows the answers to this interesting question. Early goal setting. Most of Mark Zuckerberg's early life was marked with numerous computer project attempts. But when he saw the potential of Facebook, he immediately focused on it and thought of bigger things. He was a visionary and dreamt of making Facebook a tool that would make the world more open. Creating a fast and effective global communication network was his ultimate goal. Never settling for less. Initially, Facebook was just a pastime. But because, he is, because of his determined personality, he pursued to make it bigger. His goal served as his motivation to make Facebook as big as possible. He refused to sell Facebook because he did not want it to be subdued by a larger corporation. He already envisioned Facebook as a global project. The changes that he made on this project were not intended to make it better, uh, were not intended to make it better step by step, just he wanted to make developments that were bigger, bolder, and more useful. Always start small, but aim big. As previously stated, Facebook was just a school project. Even if Mark already had big goals, he knew that the starting small was the most effective way to start his venture. He had the patience to spare even in the struggling years of his project. Instead of waiting for a bigger source of capital, he made the most out of his limited resources. He started his project in his dormitory with the help of his friends and only moved to Palo Alto when they deemed it necessary. Up to this day, he still cherishes his humble beginnings and proudly recalls them whenever the opportunity arises. Confidence in oneself. Ever since as a kid, Mark was already considered gifted and a genius in the field of computer programming. Right there and then, he knew he already had it. Whatever success Mark achieved, he, his self-confidence never faltered. Even in incidents where he was belittled or criticized, he still stood proudly, ready to face the day. After all, his development greatly depends on how he handled himself, especially in adverse time. Instead of pondering on mistakes, he focused on his strength and tried to pursue excellence. Focus on what we are good at. Part of being successful in the is the influx of other seemingly interesting activities that could potentially distract you from your main passion. But Mark was able to withstand this. His love for programming outlasted his love for other things. He became so focused on his chosen field and he was constantly fending off other things that could hinder his progress. He chose not to finish his college education because he knew that his love for computers would suffer if he continued. He moved to a place that he considered a proper venue that could nurture, support, and develop his talent. This concludes Chapter 7, The Freight Broker Millionaire Mindset by Dr. Cam Todd. I'll see you on Chapter 8.